Hi, I'm Jane, and this is my YouTube channel. Not really a channel so much as it is my storage unit for all my hiking videos and nature videos and things of that sort. But I figured I would use this platform, if you will, to share my dream I had back in August 22nd of 2021. This dream I'm talking about is a rapture dream. And I shared it on my wall, on my Facebook wall, the morning after I had the dream. And I kind of left it at that. I wanted to make a video, but I thought, you know what? There are so many rapture dream videos out there. Mine will just fall right through the cracks. It's just a dream anyway. What's the use? But yet, I've not been able to get away from this dream, nor forget any of the details. It has remained fresh in my mind for these past two years. This dream affected me so much, which is why I've not been able to get away from it. And I've wondered why I haven't been able to post a video about it because I never felt right about doing it being that there are so many videos out there. And I wrestled with God about it. I said, God, it affected me and why can't I use it to share with other people? It might affect them the same way. But I never heard anything from God about this and so I left it alone and let it be until Monday, August the 21st, 2023. Just out of the blue, while I was playing with my cats in my bedroom, God put into my spirit, now I want you to share your dream. If you know me, you know I'm from South Carolina. And my dream began with my family, including my two sons, and a lot of our dear friends was with us. And we were visiting Charleston, South Carolina and we were on an embankment having a picnic right across from the, the Cooper River Bridge, which is now known as the Arthur Ravenel Jr. Bridge. But in my dream, I still knew it as the Cooper River Bridge. And we had a big spread out there eating, laughing, and carrying on. And people were all around us doing the same thing with their family and friends. And I noticed that something was different about that day. The sun was shining beautifully, nothing different about that, but just the way that nature was behaving. Now, I love nature and I love hiking, but never in my waking life have I ever seen anything as beautiful as what I've seen in my dream. I remember thinking as I was sitting on that bank, the breeze that was blowing through the trees, the leaves, they sounded melodic as they blew in the wind, almost like angels singing and rejoicing from a far distance. And their harmony, I had never, heard such beautiful harmony in all my life. I also noticed that the birds were gathering in these trees, not just a few, but a whole lot of birds. And their trill and chirping was so different than what I have ever heard in nature. It was so beautiful. It's like a choir was gathering in those trees. It's almost as if they knew that something was about to happen. Then I looked up at the sky and saw the billowy clouds flowing across the atmosphere. I'd never seen such beautiful pastel hues, pinks and lavenders and oranges and just, just all kinds of different pastel colors. And I knew in my spirit, in my dream, that something was about to take place. Suddenly and without warning, the sun went black and it started pouring rain. The people all around us were gathering their things and running to their cars. And I had an SUV and we fit into my car as many people as we possibly could. But I looked down and the road below us was, the traffic was overflowing, coming and going. There was no way out of that place. And I noticed the big bridge in front of us was lined with cars from our end all the way to the other end at Patriots Point. There was just no way out. We had no choice but to stay right where we were. And I remember sitting there staring at the rain and for no reason at all, I said out loud, and as it was in the days of Noah, so will it be at the coming of the Son of Man. And then suddenly the rain stopped. It was a downpour that stopped instantly and a feeling of eeriness took over the whole area there. It got really, really quiet eerily quiet. And after a few moments of the eerie quietness, we began to hear people scream. And as we looked around, we saw fires popping up all around us, not in just one area, but everywhere. 
and we saw billows of smoke rising to the atmosphere. And I looked behind me and there were buildings collapsing and we looked into the sky and it looked like the stars were falling upon us. Needless to say, fear and panic set in everywhere. At this point, I became desperate and I needed to get us out of that area as soon as possible, but we weren't going anywhere anytime soon. So we just sat there until suddenly we looked up and saw the bridge in front of us swaying. And we began to hear the people scream. They were screaming for help. We felt helpless because we couldn't help them. And to this day, sometimes I can still hear them screaming. I know it's just a dream, but it affected me that way. The bridge collapsed and fell into the river. And when it did, it caused a tsunami. And the water rushed in and took some of the cars off the, the, the road below. And I found a way to get us out of there. So I drove down the bank and through the clearing on the road onto a dirt road. And when I did, we drove for about three to four miles when suddenly at the very end, we saw a cliff. And I couldn't understand why there was a cliff in Charleston. If you know the Charleston area, you know there are no cliffs down there. But supposedly the water had come in and broke off some of the earth and left a cliff. And I noticed there were a lot of people there standing around. They seemed happy and just smiling really big. So I pulled my car over and, and got out and I asked them what was going on. These people told us, you need to run towards the cliff. And when you get to the edge, you keep going, do not stop. And I looked at my family and friends and I looked at them and I said, you guys are nuts. You're a nutcase. We are not suicidal and we are not jumping over a cliff. And they just looked at us and they said, calm down. Then one of them quoted a scripture, Joshua 1 and 9, which is one of my life verses. And he said, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. At that very moment, I knew I was in the presence of angels. And I began to feel my fear melt away and I was suddenly trusting of them. And one of them said, now, now is the time. Run and do not look back. So me and my family, we started running towards the edge of the cliff. As we were running towards that cliff, I felt something changing. My whole body was changing. I felt every pain that I ever had was gone. It dissipated and every fear that I was feeling was no longer there. And when I got to the edge of the cliff, and when my foot left the earth, I looked up and I was rising upwards toward heaven. As we were flying through the atmosphere, I looked down to look at the earth. Below, there was nothing but fire and smoke everywhere. Then I looked up again and I looked beyond the masses. And there was Jesus. He just stood there with his hands by his side, his palms facing us. And he didn't say anything, but I could feel him staring at me. And I could feel his love piercing me. A love like I had never felt before. And all I could say was, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. It's you, it's you, Jesus. But then I woke up. And when I did, I sat up in bed, but I was still saying the name of Jesus over and over. And when I opened my eyes and looked around, I became so disappointed that it was just a dream. I didn't want it to end. I know in the future, my dream will become a reality. Maybe not detail by detail as I viewed it in my dream, but it will become a reality. Don't be pulled in by those who claim that God showed them when he was coming. And don't be seduced by date setters who claim they know the hour that our Lord will appear. Don't let that happen to you. Don't be pulled in by these people. But I do urge you, if you don't know Jesus, now would be a great time to get to know him. 
if you feel like something is amiss, something is missing out of your life, you can't seem to find real peace, joy, and happiness, then my friend, that missing peace is Jesus. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11, it says, He also has planted eternity in men's hearts, yet they cannot fathom what God has done from beginning to end. It has been said that God has divinely implanted a sense of purpose that has been working through the ages, that which nothing under the sun but God alone can truly satisfy. No human can bring you the joy that is unspeakable, nor peace that passes all understanding. In fact, you will always be searching for that one thing your soul is hungry for. In Matthew eleven twenty eight, the Bible tells us, Come, all you who are burdened and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That was Jesus speaking. If you're feeling lost and lonely and you don't know which way to turn, you're missing something in your life, and that something is Jesus. You know, he came as a human to this earth, and he went to the cross and died for you and me and our sins. And he rose again on the third day. He is well alive. He is not dead. When he came, he laid down his life for you. It wasn't taken from him. He laid down on that cross and spread his arms out. And that, my friend, is love. He loves you. Don't wait till it's too late.